This here is the most disappointing motherboard of all time. And you might say, wait, two CPUs? Huh? Four, 12 DIMM slots? Overclocking support? X79 high core count Xeons? Where could you go wrong, Timmy Joe? Well, this is not only one of the most disappointing motherboards ever, it's one of the more disappointing, I didn't do my research moments of my entire YouTubing career. And I'm, I'm absolutely saddened, I'm downtrodden. This is the story of the EVGA SRX classified and how it is the most disappointing motherboard one of the cooler looking, but one of the most disappointing motherboards, if not the most disappointing motherboards of all time. Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Time. You gotta be pumped on that, right, Will? Computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, how's it going, folks? It's Timmy Joe making videos about computer parts on the internet. And I, I bunged up. I did. I screwed up. Um, I didn't do my research on this one. And uh, it all starts with my friend Tyler. If you're a fan of the channel, you know Tyler. He's been giving me weird, crazy, awesome hardware for years now. And when he came up with this one and sent me a picture of this, I was just like, damn, dude, I got to get my hands on that. Give it to me. And that was the conversation. He brought it to me. We had, very, we had done very little research. He bought this board, the EVGA SRX Classified, for about $450, I think, with the CPUs that are in it. Two six-core Xeons with 12 threads, so 24 all together here, and uh, 24 threads, 12 cores. And uh, I was like, man, we gotta make this better. We gotta get the best CPUs possible. We gotta get max the RAM out on it. I'm gonna do all kinds of overclocking. I'm very familiar with the SR two that's this guy's older brother that was an x58 platform overclocking xeon beast that you could take two six cores and overclock using a very similar motherboard layout to this and i, I played with one uh if you want to check this video out uh this guy's a guy named quinn he let me over and check out his weird wall mounted old school weird looking computer one of the cooler computer builds i've ever seen and it was using an sr2 with two i think x5670s 50, or something like that uh and he put two aios on it it was all cool i never got to like m overclock with it i always wanted to but uh i mean it was on his wall it's not like i was taking it home with me uh so when i saw that tyler got one of these i was ecstatic x79 even though technically it's not x79 it's the c600 chipset for Xeons. And uh, had I done any research whatsoever, or maybe thought to maybe go back and watch a Gamers Nexus video that I kind of remembered this being in, I wouldn't have been as stupid and ordered a bunch of stuff that I can't even use for this because there's basically absolutely no overclocking support for this platform and that it's its biggest Debbie Downer. There could have been, I'm sure, this board was developed with the intention of having unlocked Xeons be a possibility. And if you're an X79 enthusiast, you would know it's great to grab the uh, E5 1680V2, which I have played with before, and take it from its like 3 gigahertz space all the way up to like 4.2, 4.5 gigahertz and get some serious performance out of this. It's not like even Ryzen 1700 performance, but it's close. So if you times that by two, put that in this board and start putting some extreme cooling on this, that sounds like a pretty damn good idea, doesn't it? Uh-uh, uh-uh. So me and Tyler, both being computer enthusiasts, go on eBay and buy another 1680v2, which I had already had one. That's why it was, didn't seem like that big a deal to go this way. But it was still like $180 Canadian for a CPU that really there's no way to use in here because... These Xeons do not have the links, do not have the technology that allow two of them to work in tandem. The only ones that will work are the 2000 series uh, Xeons, which this does have, two six core uh, 2620s, which are very terrible CPUs. They're like two to 2.5 gigahertz. They're, they're not anything special. So I have those in here 
you know, and I'm thinking we could put these better eight core CPUs in there. We go and get 48 gigs of RAM, which it turns out you can't even use all these DIMMs in dual CPU mode anyways, because the one CPU only has four RAM slots like connected to the CPU. So if you populate these in here, they don't work. It won't even post as far as I can tell. So I've got some 13, 33 megahertz ECC memory here. We got for a good deal. It's not that big a deal. And, uh, you know, I'll go and use these with one of these CPUs and another motherboard. Maybe we'll get a cheap, I don't know. We'll do, we'll do something. But essentially, you can't put these two CPUs, these eight cores in here. And yes, there are higher core count CPUs we should have got, which would have maybe made for some sort of a video. But like I said, Gamers Nexus has already sort of done this video where they had the best Xeons you could put in here, which are um, E5 2695s or 97s. They're 12 cores with uh, an up to 3.2 gigahertz boost on one core, probably goes to like three gigahertz on all cores or 2.8. And when you pair those together, the performance is not very good by today's standards. Uh, unfortunately, without any overclocking support, this thing is just done. It was so disappointing. So I posted some pictures on Twitter and stuff like that of this whole situation, all excited. And I was quickly, after we had ordered the CPUs and the RAM, told that there is no overclocking support, or well, really, there's no dual CPU support for the overclockable CPUs with an unlocked multiplier. You could put one of these in here and you know make it work. You could put one of these in here and overclock it I don't even know if you could do that because it kind of seemed, well, maybe, maybe you could unlock them all. I don't know. But what's the point? It's a dual CPU motherboard. If I want to go and get an X79 motherboard and do some overclocking, I've already done that before. I'll do it again, maybe, but that's not what this video was about. It was about dual so sockets. It's about maximum performance from 2012. Essentially, as soon as Ryzen came out, as soon as the Ryzen 1700 came out, it had better performance than this thing could offer unless you really decked it out with the highest end core count, you know, CPUs, but then the single core performance goes to shit. So unless you're doing what Gamers Nexus was doing with this thing, doing video rendering, it's essentially useless. You could get a super micro motherboard or go and get, you know, some HP or Dell server with this kind of setup in it and you'd be just as well off. And you could probably buy that whole system for like, less than this motherboard cost, you know, and, and, and get a power supply and a case and a chassis. Speaking of which, this is an HPTX form factor. You can't even buy cases that support this form factor anymore. I mean, I'm sure you could, but in my quick research, it's very hard to go and find a case that will fit this gigantic motherboard. It's just an absolute disappointment. So that's what this video is about. It's a little bit of the story of this. And how Intel, after this had been r and d I'm sure, eliminated the ability to put two of these in tandem and basically made it so none of those 2000 series chips had an unlocked multiplier. You might say, can't you BCKLK overclock? Can't you base clock overclock with these? Well, with these very crappy Xeons, these, uh, what are they, 2620s, no, not at all. In fact, I can even get this 1333 megahertz RAM overclocked to 1600 megahertz easy enough, you know, with this, this whole setup. But I could not even get this thing to post once with any BCLK overclock. I was looking to get like 100 megahertz, 200 megahertz. No, I put two NHD 15s on here for God's sakes. Total overkill for these CPUs. Can't even BCLK overclock one bit. I don't know if it's just these CPUs. There's only a voltage offset uh, in the BIOS and no matter how high or low or what I put these things, I just could not get the thing to post with any sort of base clock overclock on here. So with these six core times two CPUs at like 2.2 gigahertz here, what kind of performance can we get? So we're gonna do a little race. Got this all set up here. We see here the 2620 in all of its glory, running at uh, not a very great frequency there. Uh, and uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, run my mouse over the run icon there. And then if you wanna come over this way, I was fortunate enough to nab a 3300X. 
four cores, eight threads, brand new CPU from AMD, a very, very delicious budget option, as we will see. Four cores, eight threads, pretty damn good IPC, mind you, but we're pinning it against a system that has six cores times two, 12 threads, 24 threads versus eight. Let's see who's the winner. I'm gonna go over here and hit go. Should be going on both. We're going on both. So this is a little uh, race here. And uh, yeah, so I'm an idiot and Tyler's kind of an idiot. Although thank you very much, Tyler. Really, I should be the expert here and I've done the research before we went and order all this extra stuff. We'll find homes for these CPUs and the extra RAM, I'm sure. So I'm not too, too, too worried. So we see here we're running at two gigahertz, one nine nine five gigahertz on all 12 of these cores. And uh, it's running a little race here. And then we go over to the unoverclocked, and I mean, it's in this tiny, this little case here is the whole computer. We're already done 1,083 at stock. And what do you think this guy did? 1,002. Eight threads beats 24 threads. I mean, there's eight years difference between these two CPUs, but it's very clear that, that there's very little performance to be had in that. In fact, if you wanted to populate with 12 core, 24 thread times two Xeons in this, with the best Xeons you can effectively get, which are uh, the E5 2695s or 2697s, uh, so you'd have double the threads that I've got here. And a little bit better frequency. It goes up to about 3.2 gigahertz on a couple of cores, but uh, it will probably be more like a 2.8 all core boost. Uh, that would only do 26 to 2700 in Cinebench R15. So we've got a thousand with a little bit lower clock speed. So little bit better clock speed effectively double that to around maybe 25 to 2600 in Cinebench R15. That's not very good considering I have a 12 core 3900 hex over here and it will do 3200 in Cinebench. Now last thing I'm going to talk about here I know this isn't the greatest video it's more of just a disappointment and you know just to, just to caution anyone from ever buying this damn thing it is really cool and very useless. I mean, Tyler was thinking once he got, you know, 16 cores, 32 threads working on this thing, maybe he could use it for some reason. But as far as gaming is concerned, you might say, well, why didn't you do any gaming benchmarks? Well, I don't have the right CPUs. doesn't make sense. But Gamers Nexus did go through all this trouble already. They did run gaming benchmarks. And they essentially found that two 12 core 24 thread <laughs> CPUs I, like couldn't even match the 2600 the R5 the Ryzen 5 2600 in gaming performance with half the, the threads with a quarter of the threads it's by far the most disappointing motherboard of all time as far as it being one of the most expensive, like $650 USD for this at the time, that doesn't actually sound that expensive. I mean, a high-end X570 or Z490 motherboard will go for that much these days or more. But as far as how much potential was here and the potential it's able to reach, it's absolutely the most disappointing motherboard of all time. And I feel really bad for EVGA having made it. I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. If you have any suggestions for stuff you'd like to see with this motherboard, I don't know. Comments below. If you wanna, you know, if you've ever wanted one, here's one. We might be willing to part with it. Uh, but thanks to Tyler for always giving me really cool, weird stuff to review. And I just wanted to get this video out of the way because there is no, there's not much I can do with this. I put. NHD 15s on both CPUs hoping to BCLK overclock. It wouldn't even go 25 freaking megahertz, man. Maybe some better Xeons would do better. I don't know. But uh, I think that's the end of the video. So I'm not watching Joe Instagram on Twitter. Go follow me on Twitter. Do it. Follow me on the Instagram. Hit the subscribe button. Because I'm sure you're not subscribed, idiot. Sorry, I'm the idiot. I'm the one that bought CPUs for this thing, hoping to overclock. 
please come back to the channel. Lots of changes coming very soon. Thanks for coming down this long windy road with me to disappointment. And I'll see you guys in another video. <laughs>